So you think this is one of the older, I older this, parts of Boise, maybe? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see, uh, yeah, here, this is River Street. Yeah, just continued on down. Ash Street, 617, that's my house right there, then. In the early days of Boise, now that no one ever talks about, is this was the only part of town we could live in. That's why we're down here. <laughs> I think uh, the people that were in this area a long time ago, I think everybody got along pretty good. We were all poor people. That will put us in one, one category. Everybody was trying to make a living, I guess, trying to get a home. And most of the people that lived down here then had families. And I guess we just didn't have time to, you know, be at each other's throats. <laughs> we were too busy. Well, at one time, when there were, I think, seven of us living in the house, my mother, my aunt, myself, my uncle, my grandmother, my grandfather. There was a thriving neighborhood. There were a lot of kids, a lot of houses. I grew up in 617 Ash, and I lived there until I was uh, 21. The downtown Boise that we all know was literally separated by a railroad track from the River Street neighborhood. So this neighborhood ended up being the other side of the tracks. And for a lot of folks, even though they were, you know, considered a different kind of Boise resident, that was enough for them to, you know, want to stay here in this neighborhood. And they never left. They lived here for decades. There was always music in the house. She played the piano. So there's a picture of the family band. Her and my grandfather bought the house in 1948. It was built the same year that she was born in Nampa, 1907. It is such a unique house for that area. I think that was the only stone house down there. When they put River Street through, that's when they took out the house on the other side of my house. They didn't need my house. I guess it was stone, they hated to take it down. <laughs> a blue collar built home of solid sandstone that only exists in grand homes on Harrison Boulevard or Warm Springs. So as an architectural feature, it's really, really important. Because often the place matters. It's the only thing that we have really a tangible connection to people who've gone before. The folks who lived here, you know, many of them, because they were immigrants or African-American, they weren't allowed really. They, either they couldn't afford to leave this neighborhood or through segregation, they weren't allowed to leave this neighborhood. Because I have tried to buy property other places a long time ago before I bought here. And when they find out I was black, the first thing they'd say was that it was sold. I know they don't want to, they don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we had to live down here. I hope people will learn when they visit the Heyman House and the neighborhood is that multiple stories exist in a community that they might see this piece of the story and the pioneers that settled and all of those traditional narratives that we hear. But come over here and let's hear about how people lived, how they worked, how they were discriminated against. I think it's important, obviously, for us to tell the story of those marginalized communities that haven't had a voice. This is the only African-American landmark in the city of Boise that's in its same location that still has a connection to the black community here in town. And if you look at this entire block, of all the houses that were here when it was first constructed, this is the only house that's here. She was uh, well known in the community. She spent many years in that house, in that neighborhood, helping neighbors. My goal was to make sure that the house remained standing and that her memory would be connected with that. That was what I felt was her legacy.